Today I'm going to be walking through a free pattern from Jordan Fabrics. It is a Bargello quilt, and I hope I'm saying that right. So here is the pattern, and it is a free printable off of the Jordan Fabrics website. So I'll put a link to that down in the description of this video, as well as her original tutorial video, because sometimes I think when you're doing a new pattern, it can be really nice to see how different people sew it together, especially if you need a little bit of extra help with the instructions. So I'm gonna be working through this pattern and how I'm going to do it is I'm going to make it kind of a patriotic red, white, and blue quilt. So come along and join me. So on Jordan's original pattern, she pulled nine different fabrics and there was one yard each. She chose three blues, five light prints, and then an orange accent. And her quilt is absolutely gorgeous. Now, what I decided to do is to pull some fabrics from reds, white and cream, and blues. And you can see I have a lot more fabric than she mentioned that she had. So here's kind of my thought process on how I'm going to do this quilt. So since some of these fabrics, I only have a half yard of them, I pulled a little bit extra and how I'm going to organize my quilt is in a red, white, and blue layout. And I'm going to have two strips of red, three of white cream, and then four of my blue so that it's not kind of even and I still get a nice wave aspect to it. So since I'm only going to do two reds, what I'm going to do in each strip set is choose two of these reds I like together and kind of vary it for each of the wave. I have one yard each of my white and cream, so that will always be the same in each strip set to tie it together. And then the same with the blues. These two blues are always going to be the same two in each strip set, but I'm going to choose um, two different ones from these extra four for each of the strip set. And when I start sewing this all together, I hope that all makes sense, but I just want to kind of let you know how I pulled fabric since I didn't have one full yard of each color for the nine yards that I would need. And just so you know, this is going to be a fairly sizable quilt. It is 78 inches by 94 inches. So a nice size quilt. All right, so what I'm gonna do, because I'm gonna be doing these long strips, is I'm gonna really starch all of this fabric. And this time, which is new for me, I'm going to really starch all this fabric and I'm going to let it dry before I press it and cut it. And I'm gonna be cutting all of these into two inch strips. And then I'm going to be choosing nine of them for each of the strip sets. And just so you know, we're going to be sewing 13 strip sets that have nine strips in it. So it's a lot of sewing to get started, but I'm really excited because this is the first time I'm going to be doing a Bargello quilt. So I'm gonna to get to starching and then I'll iron all this fabric and then I'll meet you at my cutting station for cutting these strips. All right, so I got all of my fabric starched and pressed and I did start cutting some of it. So I have all my cream and white fabrics finished and all my blue fabrics. These are all cut to 2.5 inches by width of fabric. So nice long strips, kind of similar to what you'd get in a jelly roll. So I just have my red fabrics here to cut. And how I like to cut my fabrics when it's all the same cuts is I will fold them with the salvages toward me and kind of layer them with how many, um, layers that I'm comfortable cutting. So here there's four different fabrics, so that's eight layers that I'm going to be cutting through. So I have them all laid out with the fold together, and what I'm going to do is square up one side, and then I'm going to cut. And then I like to just go ahead and cut off the selvage now as well. kind of an awkward cut here. A lot of times I'll just rotate my mat. That will make it a little bit easier to do those awkward cuts, but then I'm gonna have to keep going back and forth right here. So just made it a little bit quicker. So I'm gonna grab a ruler here that has some measurements on it. And like I said, I need 2.5 inch strips. So I'm gonna line up this ruler at the 2.5 inch mark. 
and then I will cut. So I'm just gonna keep cutting as many strips as I can get out of this fabric here. So I'm just gonna keep lining up my 2.5 inch mark and then just cut. And if you're doing a lot of layers at one time like I am, it definitely helps to have a nice sharp brick blade. So if you haven't switched it out in a while, now would be a good time to do that. It's always nice when a pattern has a lot of the same cuts and you can layer your fabric and get a lot of the cutting done at once. Let's see if I can get one more 2.5 inch strip out of this handkerchief. Hopefully I can, and it looks like I can. So I got very lucky because there is barely any more fabric left of that one. And I can probably get two more of the rest of them, which will be nice. All right, so now that I got all of my fabric cut, it's time to start laying out those strips. And I'll need nine strips for each strip set. So I'm gonna start with red, go into the cream, and then go into the blue. So I'm gonna start gathering my fabrics and laying them out in a way that I like them. So this is the order that I'm going to be sewing them. So I'm gonna have two reds, and then my three cream and white. And for these, I'm going to always do them in that same order of the white, the cream, and then kind of this darker tone on tone cream. It kind of has a texture to it. So these three will always be the same in every set of these. And I also have two blues that I always want to end with. So um, on the Jordan Fabrics quilt, they had an orange accent in the last one. And so that color for me is going to be this bandana just so that it stays consistent sometimes and then kind of is a little fun as well. So let's do this one. So I think here, since I have those stars, I'm going to do this kind of plaid. And this beautiful fabric came in my Rebs Fab Stash box. So I'm already using it, which kind of makes me happy because it came in my June box. So here is how my first strip set's gonna look, and I'm actually happy with it right away, just laying it off all out um, first try. So I kinda like it. I think this quilt is going to be a lot of fun to put together. So I feel like that about all quilts in new projects that I work on, but I've been wanting to do a Bargello quilt for a while, so I'm really excited about this. So I have my strips all laid out and so I'm just going to sew them together in order. Since I starch these really well as I sew, I'm going to press the seams a little bit. The pattern suggests to press each seam in a different direction as you work, so I'm going to follow along with that and see how it works out. But once I get this strip set all sewn, I'm going to sew it into a tube. I know there's a couple different patterns that you do this with. I think a trip around the world is another one. I haven't tried it yet, so I'm a little bit nervous, but also excited to finally give it a try. Um, so I'm going to get this strip set sewn and then work on the next steps with it. All right, so I have my first strip set all ready to cut, and it is in that tube form so now I'm going to start cutting the pattern has a nice diagram so that you can see exactly what strips you need to cut so I'm gonna follow that and start cutting so the first thing I'm gonna do is square up one side and then I'm going to cut a 
three inch strip. And I'm gonna try and keep these all in order because we're going to be sewing them back together in order. So I don't wanna get them all mixed up. So I'm just gonna follow the layout and get these all cut. All right, so per the instructions, we're gonna start with the middle strip that is the one inch strip and remove the stitches. Now I'm removing them at the bottom so that my fabric that's always gonna be the same on every single um, strip set is going to be that, that blue, remember? All right, so we have that one. And then now the, the color that we want to be on the bottom is this um, star. And we want that to be the same on both. So we're gonna go up one to pull the stitches. All right, and then again, we're gonna do that on this one as well. So you can see this is why it's really important to keep these in order. All right, and so now we want the red to be on the bottom and we're just gonna keep working in that way. All right, so here is the first block and I am loving how it looks. I am going to start making some more of these, get this all sewn together and pressed, and I'll show you what it looks like. But oh my goodness, this is going to be such a gorgeous quilt. I cannot wait. All right, so where we left off is I have these beautiful strips to complete one of my blocks all laid out nice and neat on my board. And I got to that point and I really had to stop and think through what my next steps were gonna be because I always read my patterns first before I get started on them, but sometimes I don't see everything quite come together until I get a block together and had all those strip sets ready to cut and I thought I was on track for the vision I was looking for and when I got this block all laid out I realized I didn't quite think it through because my quilt is going to be a little more scrappy and I was hoping I would have all of my rows look something like this where the same colors flowed through the row. And I realized because I didn't have the full yard of all of these colors, that wasn't quite going to work. Mine was going to have to look a little scrappier. So I honestly at first wasn't really sure if that's what I wanted to do. So I, lay, I left all of my strips out just laying around for a few days, honestly, because I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to move forward with this quilt without it having the vision that I first had. And just remember that's okay to do sometimes. Sometimes when you really get started on a quilt, it may not start coming together like you wanted it to. So often I do that. I just leave it and let it sit and I think about it a little bit more and try to decide what I wanna do. So what I did was I kept going forward with my strips and going in that two red, three kind of white cream and four blue. And I just realized that my rows weren't going to all flow together. And what I decided to do was just really dive into that and let that be okay. So I'm gonna show you how I'm going to make that all come together. 
I'm going to cut all of my strips and lay them out and stack them up instead of working each block at a time. My original plan was just to, as I cut my strips, lay them out and sew that block together and then move on to the next block. That wasn't going to work. So I have my piles of all my strips cut and then I picked out the stitches and laid them out in that that pattern, this pattern like this, but all stacked up. I have my stack laid out and you can see it's all laid out in the way the block is going to look, but not all of my strips have the same colors because what I've been doing is kind of just shuffling. So I just move them around so that there's going to be no actual flow to, you know, the lighter background with the blue isn't always going to be my first one. It's going to go back and forth after I shuffle all these a lot. So the only consistent ones will be my white cream row and the last two of my blue will always have that solid dark blue and the um, bandana pattern. Those are the, going to be the only consistent ones. The rest are going to be all shuffled through. So I'm just going to keep going through and just moving my strips around and it's just going to be more of a scrappy Bargello. While that wasn't my original plan, it wasn't going to be really scrappy like it is now. I mean, I honestly would really love to go through and make one that is like this as well. I think the scrappy is going to work and I'm really excited about it. So how am I going to bring all these blocks together? So my plan is, to just stack these up and bring them over to the sewing machine. And what do I mean by that? So that three inch strip is always going to be my bottom strip. So I'm gonna lay that onto a design board. Even though this design board is still a little bit too small, I think it's going to work fine. Um, and then I'll lay my next strip on, my next, And just keep doing that until I have the whole row laid out here and you can go ahead and make sure that it's scrappy how you want it to be because I'll show you with my test block what can occur and we all have different preferences on how perfect our quilt needs to be even a scrappy quilt. So I'll show you what happened on my block so it can be something that you look out for. For me, I'm not going to um, let it bother me, <laughs> just to be honest there. So I have it all stacked up in order and I'm just going to take that over to the sewing machine and I'll sew it in order as I'm sitting there and I'm going to press while I'm sitting there to keep it all nice and neat. But let me show you my test block. So I'm calling it a test block, but it actually is going to go into my quilt. So it's not quite a test. Um, but what happened is that, and now I can't, okay. <laughs> See, I couldn't even find it right away. Is that these two ended up right next to each other. And it kind of interrupts the flow that you see of the blue because these two technically would look better if they were at a diagonal from each other and I've got a different um, print right here to keep the flow going. Now I could have made the decision when I noticed it to pick this out and put a new strip. I just didn't want to honestly and I think when the quilt is all up and together it's not going to be that big of a deal. So here it is where you can see it up a little better. I definitely could have gone through and pick that out but I feel like when you're looking at it and it's farther away and it's going to be in a quilt with a bunch of other blocks I don't think it'll be as noticeable but it's something to look out for if you're doing this scrappy method like I am to pay attention to where they land together and um, and if that will bother you to look for it and make sure it doesn't happen uh, something you could do I think to make sure that never happens is to make sure each of your scrappy prints 
stay in the same row. So you can see here that this one was mainly always my first strip in the blue. And this one was also one of my first strips, but it fell to a second strip at one point. If I always just used these two in the first strip, this wouldn't have happened. Hopefully that makes sense. If you're, if you're very aware of that and don't ever have those patterns go from being in the first row or the second row and go back and forth, they'll never end up together. When you're planning your quilt, if you're doing it in a scrappy method, just keep that in mind. All right, so now we're finally at the part where we can sew the block together. So I'm over at the sewing machine and I just have it stacked up on my design board, ready to go. I have my iron and a mat nearby so that I can press it as I work. I found that that just keeps it a lot neater and cleaner and is much easier to sew. One thing to keep in mind is if you need this all to come together very perfect is that you should pin these strips as you work. They can get a little wonky and not line up that great if you don't. I don't like to do that. Um, so it's just not something I'm going to ever find myself doing unless it's something that I really need it to meet together really well for the block to look great for me. This one is going to be kind of that wave flowing together and I don't need it all to come together perfect. So I'm not going to pin. Now I'm just gonna start with the strip that is on top and go to the next. I have my sample block up on the design wall where I can see it. So I can refer to that as I work. Something else you could do is keep the pattern nearby to make sure you have the size strips going in order as you need them. Um, those tricks will save you from having to pull out some stitches. So I'm gonna grab my first strip, strip and start sewing. So as you'll notice on some of these strips, is they have a fold from where you picked out the seam. So what I do with those to make sure everything lines up nice is I will hit it with a little bit of heat from the iron to flatten it out as I work. So that little step adds a little bit of extra time in this whole process, but I find that it's really going to help you make sure that this all comes together if you do that little bit extra. So I'm just going to line up my strip and you can see that a lot of times they will just nest together nicely on their own. And then sometimes like here, they're a little bit farther apart. So there's a few things you could do. You could put some pins in to make sure that they line up really, really nicely. Or as you work, you can just kind of manipulate them into place and sew a little bit slowly. I do the second. I just sew a little bit slowly and, and work them in. Now, I'll also, as I work, flip seams if I need to. And that's why I keep the iron on nearby me so that I can press them in the next the opposite direction if I needed to flip them as I was sewing. So I'll show you that if it happens. And my plan is to square up these blocks after I get them all finished. I'm gonna measure them and square them up so that they all come together nicely. So if they're a little bit off, that's gonna be just fine for me. So I'm kinda just trying to get this in place. And so, and this isn't ideal, obviously. <laughs> um, like pinning it would probably save me a little more time. I just don't like doing it. So since I want this to be something that I enjoy doing, I'm not gonna add a step that will make it not enjoyable to me. So what I'm going to do is you see how this one here, I had to move the seam in a different direction so that my, my seams weren't overlapping and creating a lot of bulk. What I do first is I'm gonna press that down and just set the seam across here. So I'm gonna make sure that seam goes the direction that I flipped it as I was working and I'm gonna press this seam. So what you'll notice is that it's a little off at the top and the bottom, and I still have threads from when I picked the seam that I didn't pull off. 
So that is why after I finish all 20 of these blocks, I am going to square them up and make sure they're nice and even and all the same size so it comes together nicely in the end. So I'm just gonna first, after I set that seam, is I'm gonna finger press it over. And I'm gonna make sure all these seams are going in the same direction so that they come together in a row all going the same direction and then the next four blocks that I work, the seam's all going to go in the other direction so that the rows will ne nest together. So I'm going to finger press it and then I'm going to add some heat through here. And because I starched this fabric earlier, it's all going to lay nice and flat for me. All right, so now we're just going to grab the next strip that I have, and I do have a seam that's folded again, so I'm gonna press that really quick. And wherever you were cutting these strips, if you had an iron nearby, and um, when you picked out all these seams, if you pressed it then, that would probably save you this little step here. I just honestly didn't think to do that. <laughs> I should have. But it wasn't until I sat down over here that I was like, all these, you know, seams are folded from when I pressed them before. And um, it's kind of not lining up very well. So, you know, if you think about doing that when you're over and picking out all the seams, it'll probably save you a little bit over here. But here I am, and I'm not going to go through all the piles and fix it right now. So I have to do it here. <laughs> all right, so just the same. I'm just going to work through this whole pile um, in this manner. I'm going to lay my strip on top and sew and try to line up the seams the best I can. And if I need to flip them because two are sitting together, I'll go ahead and do that here. And the nice thing is, is if your seams are nesting, you can kind of feel where they are and that helps me keep everything lined up pretty close too. But like I said, if you are a pinning queen or king, you know, use that method. Because pinning will probably really honestly help this line up much better than what I'm doing. But if you're like me, and don't like using all the pins, you know how I feel right here. <laughs> so again, I flipped a lot of seam, seams this time around. Um, so I'm just gonna add some heat and set the seam right here and get those all those seams going in the new direction they're gonna need to be going to make this less bulky through there. And then finger press. And this is a good time, too, to just kind of look and make sure you're happy with the flow of the colors and how they're coming together and make any adjustments you feel you might like to, like to make before you add on a whole bunch more strips. Because maybe there's two, two um, little blocks that you don't like right, right next to each other. Maybe you don't like all three of these bandana prints being together. And that's something you feel like you need to change. If you do, and you know right now that it's something you need to change, do it now before you get the whole block together. Um, I'm fine with how it's coming together right now, so I'm gonna leave it and keep adding on more blocks or more strips. So I'm gonna keep building these in this method. So I'm going to keep working through this block and then after I get all 20 of them finished, I'm going to show you how I am going to trim them up so they're all the same size. All right, so now I'm going to square these up. They're a little uneven around everywhere. So I found that the best size for me for my blocks was to square them up to 18 inches. Yours might all end up larger or smaller, but consistently the best size has been 18 inches. So I just use my mat because I don't have a square ruler that's large enough to trim to that size. 
I'm just down in the corner where the ones come up. And so I have 18 here and 18 over here. So that just makes it really easy for me to get this squared. So you really want to press these nice and flat because you see they'll stretch a little with all this fabric going in different directions. So I just kind of do honestly the best I can, but squaring it up makes a huge difference uh, for getting these blocks to line up. So I just cut one side, then make sure it stays lined up there. And I'll go ahead and cut the side down closest to me as well. I found that getting two sides nice and squared really helped rather than doing one side at a time. I'll cut along here and it's not an easy angle for me, but it did work a lot better uh, for me doing two sides than the one. But really you can just do what is best for you. So then I turn that corner that has the fresh trimmed sides and I line it up at the 18 on both sides. So 18 across here and then across my zero line here. And then I trim the final two sides at the 18 lines. So I have 18 here. And then I'll trim along at the bottom. And you can take a look and make sure everything's still lined up before you do each of your cuts, just to make sure you didn't accidentally shift anything. But you can see that's quite a bit of fabric that I trimmed off. And so if I didn't take the time to square up all of these blocks, it'll be really hard to piece this together and get it nice and consistent and even. It's just going to be all wonky if I didn't go ahead and do that. But the blocks are looking so good. So I'm going to get that all together so you can see the layout and how it's all going to come together. It's going to be a gorgeous patriotic quilt. All right, so now you can see the layout starting to come together and all of the waves and the Bargello. It is looking gorgeous. One thing we need to still work on is getting the first row of three inch strips attached. So these strips are going to go on the beginning of each row that we sew. So if you're adding to this quilt or taking away any, you will just add as many of these three inch strips to the first block in the row as needed per amount of rows. So you just open it up so that for me, I have one of my blue squares at the bottom because uh, that's just how my layout works. So I am going to get these ready as well for the beginning of each of my rows and get ready to sew these all together to get my patriotic Bargello quilt already. It's so scrappy looking. I'm really loving how it is all coming together. I was pretty worried about it, but I really like the way it is looking. So right now I have three rows. I'm going to keep adding on to this quilt though, because I would like it a little bigger but I just wanted to go ahead and share this one step just so that you didn't miss it in the pattern when you grab that from the Jordan Fabrics website. All right, so after getting all of my blocks finished and laying out the quilt, I just sewed them together in rows and then sewed those rows together. This quilt, Per the pattern from Jordan Fabrics has four blocks by five blocks and I ended up just doing three by three so far and I think I'm going to add on the rest of them just to get it that little bit bigger but I'm going to take my time. It is a lot to sew. It is an absolutely beautiful quilt and I've already been thinking about some different color options I would like to do for this quilt but I wanna take my time and really enjoy getting the rest of those blocks together because it really is a lot of work to try to get them all lined up nicely. I've been making a few little mistakes and like I said before, some of my squares have ended up with the same pattern right next to each other. But if you see with this layout, it really all just kind of blends together and it still works, which I'm so happy about. 
I think it turned out great, really scrappy. Let me know what you think in the comments, but I think to save myself a little bit of stress, when I make this pattern again, I'm going to make sure I have a yard of each of the fabrics to make it a little bit easier on me. But let me know in the comments if you've made a Bargello quilt before. Did you use Jordan Fabrics pattern or did you use a different one? I'd love to hear which one you did and what you thought about it. All right, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.